This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and welcome to Cold Lake, Alberta for day two of the U18 Female B Hockey Alberta Provincial Championships here on rink number two. I'm Tyson Dolany. It's my pleasure to have another couple of calls for you this morning, this afternoon, and then leading into the three o'clock game to wrap things up for day two and close out our last big day of games here on rink number two in Cold Lake. Tomorrow, of course, coming up, we've got the semifinal at 9.15, same time as this game time this morning, and then we'll all transition everybody on the cruise back over to Imperial Place, full-on show for you for the gold medal game, but first, we still got to get through today, and that's where we find ourselves, a matchup between the GHC Inferno and the Airdrie Lightning, so a little bit of Southern Alberta cooking for us this morning here in rink two as both teams from down south get a chance to come into this one and have a little bit of fun here in Cold Lake. So my friends, with that, I'm not going to waste too much time right off the top with an intro, simply because I'd like to rest the voice, I'd like to finish off uh, my breakfast here that I've got, and we're about, uh, I'd say, probably about, what, um... 10 minutes away from the warm-up starting or 10 minutes away from puck drop. Not really sure how this is working. Memory's kind of shady at this point. But we'll get over there and we'll get going. I'm just going to run the sponsors. And, of course, I guess that's the last thing i got to touch on. Day one was a tremendous success. Of course, you saw the opening ceremonies over on Cold Lake Ice TV last night. A big thank you to everybody who tuned into that live stream last night. Really never sure what you're going to get for something that isn't just hockey. And you guys absolutely blew us away tuning into our half-hour opening ceremonies live stream. And, of course, where would we be without the incredible volunteers who put that opening ceremonies together for us here in Cold Lake last night? It was an incredible show of just... Absolutely everything. The opening ceremonies, it had it all. I, I Go watch the live stream. I can't do it justice, quite honestly, at 9 o'clock in the morning. That said, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you to all the volunteers, everybody involved in the tournament, the organizers this weekend, who have made it fantastic. And thank you to everybody that has allowed me to be here this weekend. Coming up from, and again, this is kind of the weird part, as uh, I know coming from Cold Lake myself, the Lakeland Jaguars are quote-unquote my home team, but... A guy who now resides in Airdrie, Alberta. Well, you come in and Airdrie's here as well. So it's kind of one of those things. It's not a bad thing to see both teams go out there and do well. And we'll see what the Airdrie Lightning have in store this morning against the GHC Inferno. And I mean, partial to Calgary too. What else would you do in Airdrie if you weren't in uh, Airdrie, right? You go to Calgary. So my friends, with that, I could yammer on all morning. Or I could just play the sponsor video and we could just get out of here for a few minutes and finish off breakfast. We'll get live back here in a few moments.
All right, folks, going to try and find you some updated scores from the weekend so far. Haven't gotten things quite fully sorted out here this morning. Waking up at 6, getting to the rink and getting everything set up has been quite the little process so far. So we're going to see if we can find some scores now and get you up to date with everything going on in this tournament so far because I definitely feel like I've missed some stuff, but it does not look like the U18 Female B Provincials page has updated scores. I can't, for whatever reason, seem to find it on Hockey Alberta, so kind of missing what's going on here, but we'll figure it out as we go along here this afternoon and uh, hopefully get some scores updated there for you for sure. So um, let's see what else we got going here. Uh, players, coaches, officials on the Hockey Alberta website right now. I'm not really too familiar with it and uh, kind of mess around with um, what do we call it junior B a lot so it's one of those things right you don't uh, spend too much time on certain websites you're not really familiar with what's going on and this is what it is at this point so I can't find any scores I'm sure we can find somebody to run around and uh, get some scores for us later this morning during intermission or something and we'll update you as we go along uh, this is my first time seeing the GHC Inferno this weekend, so we'll keep that in mind. Airdrie, of course, a great uh, game against, who was it, the Lloydminster Blazers yesterday here on Rink 2. We look forward to seeing what they have to offer this morning here against the GHC Inferno. Um, other than that, uh, quite honestly, we've been treated to some fantastic hockey games over here on Rink 2. We've had goaltending has been absolutely next level incredible over here. It's been great to see what uh, the goalies have brought to this tournament because you just, you never know what way a tournament's going to go, right? Is it going to be a low scoring, grinded out affair? Is it going to be a goaltender show? Is it going to be a high scoring, like whoever scores the last goal wins kind of thing? And I'm not meaning that, like, if it's a one nothing game, if you score goal number two, it's over. No, I'm talking like 7 6, 8. 8-7 kind of shootout kind of games and so far we've avoided that here at Hockey Alberta Provincials for the U18 female B division so that's been pretty phenomenal to get to enjoy some low scoring hockey games where a team will get up sit on the lead and just grind it out grind it down and try and just kill the clock as much as possible by minimizing risks and maximizing opportunities and that's kind of been my saying for the weekend is that's exactly what we've seen the teams do so far is just go out there and play some great grinded out hockey and the kind of effective hockey that you know wins when it's do or die so it appears that both teams are just about set to hit the ice now as we are almost ready to get this weekend back underway here in Cold Lake for Yet another day, the GHC Junior Inferno against the Airdrie Lightning, live from Rink 2 at the Cold Lake Energy Center. The crowd getting excited, the puck's down on the ice, and looks like we've got a goaltender out there for the in, uh, Inferno. I was going to say, I'm, the color scheme kind of had me confused. I'm like, is that the Lightning or is that the Inferno? But that would be the GHC Junior Inferno out there on the ice now, getting ready for warm-up. And... Um, yeah, we're looking forward to a heck of a hockey game this morning. As soon as uh, as soon as the both teams are out there for warm up, we'll go through the rosters, get you familiarized. If you were on the stream yesterday during the Airdrie Lightning game, you'd be familiar with their roster. But when it comes to the GHC Inferno, like I said, this is my first time seeing them this tournament, so we'll get familiar with the roster. And let me tell you, uh, they got a they got a couple of players on their team there two goalies that's that's kind of a shock in this tournament there's only I think three teams or two no three or four teams only half the tournament at best has two goalies in this tournament so it's kind of the exciting team this is a matchup of two teams going with two goaltenders and again I wish I had the scores and could figure the stuff out from last game because that would be a heck of a way to tell you who's starting compared to the yesterday for the GHC Inferno of course, we'll know that for the Airdrie Lightning, but it would be nice for sure to know about the Inferno. Anyway, Airdrie is now taking the ice on the other side of the sheet, so that means, my friends, let's get to the rosters here. And you can see I'm a little more dulled down than I was yesterday on the mic, trying to preserve the voice as we get towards Sunday now. Saturday, always a great day, but 
I'd like to leave some gas in the tank for when it's needed instead of just going full tilt from the start. So we'll see what we go with. So Airdrie, we've already seen them yesterday. So we'll go off right off the top with the GAC Junior Inferno first. Start, well, we're, we're not sure who's starting in goal. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. But in goal for the Inferno, number one, Zoe Morneau. Number two at forward and AP, Abigail Neville. Uh, number four at forward, Molly Archer. Archer, Archer. sorry, I don't know why I put a D in there. My apologies. And again, as the stream kind of comes alive here during warm-up, just want to say if I mispronounce anything and you want to correct me, there's a chat open on the live stream. You know somebody here more than likely. Text them, tell them what's wrong. Let them know to get a hold of me. I'm just up here on the concourse. Free to come see me. I am grateful for anybody to come correct me. Don't worry about that. Anyway, let's continue. Number five at D, Cassandra Case. Number six at D for the Inferno, Sienna Krupa. Number seven at D, Morgan Lloyd. Number eight at D is Emily Nielsen. Number nine at forward, Cassidy Benson. Number 10 at forward, Kayla Forsyth. Number 11 at forward, Samantha Brittle. Number 13 at forward, Cassie Morosiak. Number 14 at forward, Brilin Chieson. Number 16 at forward, Jillian Chasse. That's how I want to pronounce it. I, I had somebody in uh, high school with me that had the same last name. So again, I just want to make sure I'm getting that right. So if somebody wants to correct me, that would be greatly appreciated there. Uh, number 17 at forward, Elia Cohen, number 18 at D, Simone Stringer, and number 13 in goal for the Inferno, right? We're still waiting to see who's going to be the starting goalie, Kaylee McInnes. So that is your GHC Junior Inferno lineup, my friends. We'll now transition over to the Airdrie Lightning, who are on the other side of the ice this morning, and in the Road Reds, in goal for the Airdrie Lightning, Keegan Brost, who had a phenomenal game last time out here on rink two, making some key saves and absolutely playing lights out despite the loss to the Lloyd Minster Blazers. So number two, out forward, Juliana Mark. From what I saw in game number one here on rink two for the Airdrie Lightning, she was all around it and definitely a player to watch this evening. Wow, this evening. It's nine o'clock in the morning, Tyson. This evening, eh, bud? Anyway, that's that's besides the point. I can clown myself all day if I really want to. Number three, at forward, Cameron Cobble. Number five, at forward, Sadie Huck, who uh, quite resiliently took a hard tumble and got right back up and I think finished off the game in game number two. Number six, at forward, Jalen Lee. Number eight, at forward, Annabelle Clark. Number nine, on D, Mia McKinnis-Smith. Number 10 at forward, Marissa Jackson. Number 11 at forward, Jody Cobble. Number 12 on D, Tylea Smith. Number 14 on D, Trinity Amsing. Number 16 at forward, Dakota Williams. Number 17 at forward, the player of the game from last game out for Airdrie here on ring two, Jasmine Rye, or Ray. Um, number 18 at D, Shaley Hickerson and number 19 rounding out the skaters Layla Zavala and on the crease I expect Tatum McKinney to be the starter in this game we'll see what happens here knowing that Keegan Brost played last game I'm expecting Tatum McKinney to start based on my talks with the crowd earlier yesterday but we'll see what happens as that is yet to be determined in this game I'm sure so my friends it's 20 minutes on the clock we're sitting getting ready for this one to go. We'll have an announcement here and then we should be ready to rock with O Canada here in rank number two. We'll step aside for that and then we'll go and rock this hockey game this morning. Both teams doing their benches, now going down to do the cheers at the net. A couple of players gonna come over, help the officials with the pox. And there we go, the screams from the bench mean we are ready to go in this one. Game number one of the day here on rink two in day two action, live from Cold Lake at the U18 Female B Hockey Alberta Provincial Championships.
And it's my pleasure, I'm Tyson Dolany, to bring you this call this morning as it has been all day yesterday and it will continue to be all weekend long here in Cold Lake. The officials checking the benches, making sure everything's good as they go down the way. Team's doing their cheers and we should be ready to go for this one in just mere moments. There you go, there's a shot of Erger, there's a shot of the Inferno doing their stuff. As I, I figured out how to delay the stream on YouTube so I can have a little bit of a replay kind of monitor. So that's nice as we figured that one out for the weekend the rest of the way. And now we just are waiting for O Canada to take place as there's the please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, let's step aside a moment, honor our great country and get this underway. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to rip and uh, whoa, Tyson, rain it in there, bud. We got a long way to go this weekend. We don't need to spend it all out of the tank first thing Saturday morning. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're tuning in from. Welcome aboard Dolany TV for Rink 2 coverage here in Cold Lake for the U18 Female B Hockey Alberta Provincial Championships. We're set for opening face-off here in... The first game of the day on rink two between the Junior Inferno from the Girls Hockey Calgary League and of course the Airdrie Lightning. The face off down, pushed ahead by the Lightning. They can't get it and now back into control. The Inferno, they'll fire the puck across. The puck misses at the blue line, the stick of a waiting Inferno player. And we'll have the Airdrie Lightning flip it off the glass and try to get it out. So it is indeed in net for the Lightning Tatum McKinney as I predicted. And we'll wait to see who's in net for the Inferno. But right now we'll just worry about the shots on goal going towards the goal at least. After a couple block shots, the Lightning will move it out. A stumble at their own blue line. Cause for a reset in the neutral zone and a chase after it by Trinity Amsing. The puck now all the way down the ice and an icing call against the Inferno. So that's where we get a peek down the ice to the other side of the rink and see who's in net for the Junior Inferno. And that would be Zoe Morneau getting the start this morning for the GHC Junior Inferno. Airdrie to the left of Morneau now, lining up for the faceoff in the offensive zone. They'll push it forward yet again. That's twice off of two faceoffs they've pushed it forward. That one goes right past a stick, two feet off the crease and into the corner. The Inferno there will meet it there. Abigail Nievel going and giving chase. The Lightning get to it first and well, it's now a chance in front off a stick, bobbled and goes wide right through the blue paint, never touched anybody. A tip in front goes nowhere and it's back into the near side corner in the Inferno zone. The puck now back to the blue line for the Lightning who are having tremendous success keeping the puck alive in the offensive zone and how about that nifty one there by Sadie Huck to keep the puck alive as she's dancing around and at worst killed some clock in the offensive zone. And well, hold on, the puck's still alive. This one goes right in front of the crease and goes around now to the boards where it's cut off by another Lightning player and the Lightning still looking to chase this puck down. The Inferno getting run around their zone a little bit here early on in the first period on this shift. However, they've come up with some key blocks and gotten some key misses in the slot. Another opportunity and there you go, a key save after an extended shift in the defensive zone from Zoe Morneau to get this one a face-off to her right. 
heck of an effort by both teams. You know, the Inferno, they couldn't get the puck out, but they weren't giving up quality chances. And that one, a floater from the point, swallowed up easily by Morneau, and now the faceoff tied up to the right. The Inferno will get it, push it back to the blue line, met there by Zavala Lightning, who will fire it around off the boards and chased back behind the net. Given there is Rye for the Lightning. We'll get more familiar with the GHC Inferno players, I guarantee you that, as we go along in this one and as we see them the rest of the tournament. But how about that right now? Relin Chies on giving chase. Puck comes back the other way to Juliana Mark, who will dish it off and get it into the middle of the ice. Rai, the shot, the save, Morneau. And there you go, a first key chance, kind of in the good area of the ice, that trapezoid or triangle, whatever TSN talks about. I, honestly, it's been, uh, what, a couple of months since we watched the World Juniors? Guy tends to forget what they're talking about on the broadcast, right? However, you know where I'm going if you watch the World Juniors, and that, of course, the definition of that kind of area anyway. Shot from Rye again, right off the face-off, stopped by Morneau. We've got another whistle. We're 17.34 to go in this first period. A 0-0 score, and of course at the same rate too. If you feel like the score's never correct, you just uh, just get at me in the comments section and let me know. Is this one driven to the net? And Morneau, all kinds of twisted, appears to maybe have hit her head off the post. She's holding her head, and that didn't look good. Just gonna make sure the straps are all fine. And just readjust the helmet, and that one kind of a dome ringer for sure. It's just kind of got tangled up, sealing off the post, and I don't know if her stick kind of got tangled up in her helmet and ripped her head into the post or something. I'd, you can kind of see she just went down in kind of discomfort after that play. And the Inferno lose the face off, the Lightning keep it in for the time being after a little bit of a push, and now back the other way come the Inferno. Out to play it, McKinney's going to give it a pass because it's going to be an icing call with 17-14 to go in the first period. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you aboard the Dolany TV for this hockey game. If you're just joining us early on in this first period, it's been my pleasure all weekend to have rink two coverage so far. Day number two, just firing up here. We're about three minutes into our first game of day two, and it appears right now that the Lightning have come out with a little bit of extra oomph in their step after the loss to the Lloydminster Blazers yesterday. And they're looking uh, sharp early on this morning on the nine o'clock sleet sheet. Sorry, not sleet, that's a weather condition. As we get going around the boards in the Inferno, see it come onto their stick after a puck gets played into the middle and down the ice it goes. But here skating after it is Samantha Brittle. And she's going after it and creates the, an opportunity for the Inferno just on a forced play. And here's Brittle, a chance to get it to the net. Can't get it on. And again, I, that's another name I'm not 100% on. I don't know if it's Bridal or Brittle. I'm just going with the soft, uh, softy and soft eye, I guess you could say on that one. So if anyone wants to correct me, that would be greatly appreciated. I see we do have... Uh, somebody f cheering on the Inferno, so if somebody could update me, that'd be great. As there are just, uh, every team has five or six names I'm not entirely sure on, and the more I can get out of you, the, the better off we'll be as we transition towards the gold medal game. Penalty upcoming to the Lightning. An interference call to Tylea Smith, and the Lightning will be down to four skaters. The Inferno to the first power play of the hockey game. After... Spending the majority of this first period so far in their own zone, the, uh, the Inferno will get a chance to, of course, operate on the power play and see if they can generate a chance here. Out there killing the penalty, Juliana Mark clears it down the ice for the Lightning. Out to play it, Zoe Morneau for the Inferno, leaves it there for her defenseman Morgan Lloyd. Lloyd goes up the boards and now the Inferno looking to get out of their zone. A turnover briefly and it's all kinds of tangled up there momentarily. The Lightning come up with it, fire the shot off the side of the net. Juliana Mark, another shot off the side of the net. And now it'll be cleared over to Cassidy Benson. Benson goes ahead, gets it up and now it's to the captain, I believe, number 17 for the Inferno, Elia Cohen, and she'll move ahead, get a lucky bounce, shot on and it's a goal. That one just gets through a couple of skates and a couple of sticks. And the shot at the right time by Abigail Neville gets the goal. And how about that as an AP at Provincials to score a goal to open the scoring in day number two. That's fantastic. one nothing for the GHC Junior Inferno on the power play tally by Neville to get it 
going here this morning on rink two. We'll have the face off at center ice after the goal. Lightning tie it up, so there you go. That's kind of maybe going to be the tail, similar to how it seemed it might have gone in that first game here on ring two yesterday, where one team was going really good at spe special teams and the other team was going really good at five on five. We'll see if that is the trend in this one. As the Inferno, they've struck first with the power play marker, but the Lightning so far five on five have kind of controlled the play in the Inferno zone. That one cleared down again for an icing call against the Inferno. Everybody will go off for a line change and we'll do it up to the left of Morneau in the Inferno zone. That one, that puck got through the middle of the ice somehow and Neville, right place, right time, no hesitation, fires the puck on net, beats McKinney and that gives us the one nothing lead here early on in day number two on rink number two. The Lightning just have it kind of bounce off a couple sticks, bobbles into the Inferno zone. The Inferno will clear it down the ice again. That won't be icing, touch somebody along the way. 14.48 to go in this first period. Here we go. And it is so indeed, thank you Jennifer for updating me. It is indeed Samantha Bridal. So there we go, we got the correction there. Thank you very much. See, this is what I'm talking about, folks. It is definitely happy, uh, happy times when I get a name right. And how about Samantha Bridal playing it down across to a teammate who fires it into the lightning zone. The Inferno will give chase and meeting it at the point Lloyd for the Inferno. She'll keep it in. Just onto the stick of Zavala, down at the half wall, far side, chipped out now, and the Lightning are away and over their own zone. Now in, a couple of numbers in tight, shot fired there, saved by Morneau on Hickerson of the Lightning. Puck now in the near side corner, two Inferno against two Lightning, trying to chip that out, third Inferno in to help out with the play. This one fired right across, Cameron Cobble can't get the pass over to Hickerson. And now the puck will be played back down and off a of body in front. So Hickerson giving chase with Cobble for the Lightning and the Inferno just trying to get this one out from behind their net. And that's a big hit from things behind the net. And it looks like nobody's really sure where that penalty's coming uh, originally. The goaltender Morneau trying to leave for the extra attacker but thought better of it when the puck comes back in her direction. And it'll be Hickerson going off for the body check on that one. The Lightning, another penalty kill upcoming, the Inferno. Again, an opportunity on the power play after already striking once in this first period. 13.25 to go in the period. The win by the Lightning off the face off. They'll clear it down the ice and it'll come all the way down into the Inferno goal line area and that'll allow the Lightning to kind of catch up with it and give chase against the Inferno and now Player goes down, no call upcoming, so the Inferno will continue on on the power play. That puck directed, hits the player in front, turnover to Rye on the Lightning shot, fired on Morneau and just kind of bobbles it a second but makes the save, freezes the puck. And we'll have a face off to the left of Morneau on the power play in the Inferno zone. So far, like I said throughout this tournament so far, these teams that are here have not disappointed. Everybody's played excellent and every game's been great as the Lightning, a chance on net. Morneau turns her away with the pad save and now it cuts right in front of the net, thankfully onto an Inferno stick on the power play and there that's gonna be a penalty as well. So now we've got ourselves a four on four situation here. As these players again, I, I've noticed kind of a little bit of a little bit more physicality than I think I was expecting, but again, like I said yesterday, I'm coming at it from the point of view of its provincials, and I'm loving kind of the compete that I'm seeing out of all the teams involved. Just going in that extra mile to try and get come up with the puck, trying to battle for it, grind away, and not give an inch of ice up out there. And that's been fantastic to see. Again, it's kind of my first experience at the U18 level, so that's where maybe I'm just missing the memo kind of deal and don't mind me, but at the same rate, I love good provincial hockey and that's exactly what we've gotten so far here in Cold Lake this weekend. The puck now back in the lightning zone on the four on four for the next 49 seconds here in this first period. They'll carry it ahead with the lightning now into the zone and 
looking for an opportunity to fight the puck towards the net. Amsing directs it there, can't get it going, and now it's the opposing number 14, Berlin. Chieson coming up with the puck. Amsing, after the dump in from the opposing number 14, Chieson comes up with it herself and gets it in, and now Sadie Huck, a chance, fires the puck wide and over top of the net. What an opportunity for Huck there. Huck just misses that one as it'll go all the way across to Bridal. Bridal will fire it down the ice. And on four and four, that will indeed be an icing call, 11.32 to go. All right, here we go, folks. We'll go to the left of Morneau yet again. Four on four for the next eight seconds here in this first period, 11.32 on the clock. This one, I don't know if it's just because it's nine o'clock in the morning or what, but this one is grinding away slowly here in the first period. I feel like the three games yesterday, the first period was over before I even got a call a single puck touch in the ice it felt like and here we are now only nine minutes in roughly into this first period we've had some penalties some power plays some ice and calls sure things slow it down but I don't know I think it's just because it's nine o'clock in the morning is the Inferno cleared off through two players and now the Inferno fighting for that one looking for something and they will get the call there as Cassie Morosiak goes down on the play, looking to try and break down into the lightning zone alone. And that'll allow a four on four opportunity again, as the Inferno still have 24 seconds left in their penalty, up one nothing, and we'll have 24 seconds of four on four yet again. And then, well, my friends will go to five on four opportunity for the Inferno here in mere moments. It'll be cleared off the boards and the Lightning will not get it out as it bounced there briefly at the blue line and kept in great by the Inferno who see it now cleared into their own zone and they'll skate behind their own net. It's Cassidy Benson skating it up and it'll go past the goal scorer Abigail Nieville and it'll go down the ice. And away we go. I'm trying to... Okay, Leah Cohen, sweet. Every, everybody's getting me going, perfect. Thank you guys, I really appreciate the help with the pronunciations. Really goes that extra mile. When you end up in the gold medal game and you actually look like you know what you're talking about after doing it all weekend, like it goes that extra bit because right, right now we got 28 people watching the live stream. Not saying that's nothing, but on Sunday, gold medal game, you know you got everybody and their dog watching the live stream. And that's when it really comes to shine, the fact of, okay, this is a special tournament, this is what makes it, and when you can have every single name down just like that, top of recognition, pronunciations are right, correct, and everything goes a long way in making the final product look like something. So I thank everybody for being a part of the process here this weekend early on in day two. 9.55 to go, the Inferno now on the power play, the puck just kind of bobbling around as everybody's trying to kind of find possession of it, but now an opportunity for the Inferno, three on four into the offensive zone as the DR changing, and here comes Sadie Huck on the steal for the Lightning, dancing through one player, can't get through two, and now regrouping there is number seven for the Inferno, Morgan Lloyd and getting it out and now back the other way come the Inferno with a chance for a three on two. They're gonna kind of see that puck die off at the blue line and now back the other way comes Sadie Huck yet again. That puck again just out of her reach and can't come up with it. This one fired back around behind the net, fired now to the point. Chance here for the Lightning to keep it in but the Inferno will get it out and that will see their power play come off the board as the Lightning do just that last little bit of effort to kill off the clock in the offensive zone on the penalty kill. 8.53 to go in the first period. Now I look at the clock and I'm like, where'd the time go? Not exactly sure. It was 11 minutes and 30 seconds just four minutes ago. Anyway, the Lightning now moving it out from their own blue line. They're gonna carry it ahead. Here's Amsing yet again. She's gonna carry through um, four Inferno players can't get through and now the Inferno are, ooh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you caught, I don't know if Nick on camera caught the look on, I believe that was uh, Breland Chieson's face. She flipped the puck into the bench, 
bench and it was just one of those, oh my goodness, I just did that looks. And <laughs> that's what I've loved about this tournament so far. The angle we have of the players' faces coming to the bench or after they score a goal or after they get a really good chance on net has been fantastic. I have loved just the facial expressions on everybody's faces down at ice level this weekend. There have been some great ones and I have had some good chuckles up here high atop rank number two so far this weekend. So I really hope we catch some of those on camera because it's really good. I'm not sure. Okay. All right, 819 to go in the first period. Here in Cold Lake, just had uh, an update from the other rink. It appears that the audio is not quite fully synced up on the Cold Lake Ice TV stream this morning. That's a little uh, weird. We have had some issues this weekend with audio being a little desynced. I know on my streams, the audio is not perfect, but that's kind of why I'm not generally worrying about calling it like it's radio and doing everything to the dot because right obviously you can see the plays and secondary to that I don't want to try and be bang on with everything because there is that little delay that I just can't figure out in the back end of my programs here but that's all right we'll go along the weekend and so far ain't nobody complained about it so I don't think it's a really big issue other than me viewing it as an issue is the lightning and Inferno find themselves tangled up in the Inferno zone. Somebody trying to come up with the puck. Everybody battling for it along that far side half wall and still battling at the far side point now and it's finally out of the Inferno zone and we will have indeed an offside now against the Airdrie Lightning. 7.33 to go as the faceoff will come just outside of the blue line of the Inferno here on the far side of the ice. Face-offs down, won by the Lightning. And it'll be fired in by Zavala, who will see this one go off an Inferno player and kind of ride up into the midsection where it was, I don't know if it was bouncing off a stick or bouncing off the jersey or what, but it kind of held up there an extra second or two. And that now comes out of the zone. The Inferno see it slam back in. Two Lightning collide, and an Inferno player is almost taken out in the process because of it. But they will clear down the ice, and it's onto the stick now of Zavala in the neutral territory. This one played ahead to Jackson. Jackson will come in on the attack, looking to come up with the puck, can't. And Zavala will once again fire it in from the neutral. 6.53 to go in this first period. And it's been a good hockey game so far, right? One goal on the power play, and yep, they're gonna nail that one down at the blue line with an offside. And Dylan, thank you so much. You know what, you get calling a hockey game, and this is kind of the problem with a two-man crew. The play-by-play -play guy ends up having to be the scorekeeper too. And I'll tell you one thing about me. In my history in junior and minor hockey, I'm one terrible scorekeeper. 6.41 to go here in the first period. A 1-0 lead, as you can now see on your scoreboard on the live stream for the GHC Junior Infernal. Looks like we got a trip and call coming up. So it's Sadie Huck drawing the power play for the Airdrie Lightning. The reason I know that, right, I was changing the score. The reason I know that is because the crowd's reacting to the penalty drawn. So sometimes, you know, having this broadcast location where it is, not necessarily the worst thing when you can hear the crowd tell you what you missed. Sadie Huck, who just drew the penalty, will come in, take the face off. The puck will go back for the Inferno, who are looking to clear the zone. The Lightning looking to get back in this one, down one nothing, shot on goal, pad saved by Morneau. Now 6.13 to go in this first period with a buck 45 on the clock on the penalty to the Inferno. This one played ahead and the Lightning now out of their zone looking to get numbers down ice. Here they come into the zone now of the Inferno, shot fired, tipped in front, Morneau the save. Morneau another save and something I haven't seen so far this weekend a goalie dropping the stick and jumping out there and grabbing it with the blocker hand. That's uh, some, if you're an Oilers fan, Mike Smith kind of stuff right there. Just diving on that puck. Whatever you can do to cover it up, that's what you got to do. And that's what Morneau does there to cover up that one. And of course, negate the puck in the crease, bobbling around on a power play for the Lightning. 
The faceoff now to Morneau's right. This one back to the blue line. Shot coming from Zavala, blocked off of the boot right in front. So it'll come all the way off that, back into Lightning territory. And well, back the other way now come the Lightning, looking for a chance here. Juliana Marks skating in through two players, but the last second stick by Simone Stringer keeps the puck away from the danger zone. Now back in control of it, the Lightning. They can't get it on net, and now again the Inferno will clear. That one was, I was just kind of, I didn't want to say we'll clear because I saw that puck bounce once and I'm like, it's got to bounce the second time to get it out of the zone. So we'll just hold off on that thought for a moment. However, this puck now at the lightning blue line, they're into the neutral, looking to bust into the Inferno zone with 41 seconds to go on the power play. Jackson turned back there by Morgan Lloyd and the puck will come back to the blue line where it's battled there. And now we've got a chance here for the AP, Abigail Nieville again, shot opportunity, fired high and over top of the net. A wicked wrister that just misses and 4.50 to go in this first period. Nieville has been all around it this morning here at the nine o'clock game in rink number two. She's got the goal that's put the Inferno up by one, but she's also had a couple other good looks. A good look there for Hickerson goes off the side of the net on the power play. Six seconds to go, shot coming from the point. Looking for the tip of the side of net rye. This one fired through the crease by the Lightning. Couple of opportunities here late on the power play that has now expired. Another shot comes in, just misses the stick of Sadie Huck on the side of the net as it bounced off a body in front. And now the Inferno will clear and the perfect bobble on that puck to get it right down to the dots where the Lightning will pick up and that allows the Inferno to complete the line change after the penalty kill. Now Hickerson with it for the Lightning. Chase back there, Lloyd for the Inferno battling the oncoming four checker. This one now left in the corner where Rye picks it up for the Lightning. Now tangled up there, Rye and Kayla Forsyth. And Forsyth looks to, for the time being, have won the battle and she indeed will as it gets out into the neutral zone. This one now left there for Huck by Mark of the Lightning. This one back into the zone now after the puck just kind of got chipped in. Mark coming down the ice, looking for this, as this will go off of the boards, and the Inferno will once again get it out into the neutral. Time ticking down here in this first period as we've now got three minutes and 15 seconds to go. One nothing score, it'll go down the ice. And so far, again, a solid period from both goaltenders in this one. Again, I'm, I'm just impressed at just the effort level coming in. Another save from Zoe Morneau. That one off of the pads and away come the Inferno looking for a chance down ice. Can't get it. Intercepted by Jackson. Fired in. Morneau, no time about it. That puck comes dead on. She'll freeze it up. And we've got 35 folks tuning in from wherever, whenever around the world this morning here in Cold Lake on the live stream on Dolany TV. I appreciate everybody being along for the ride. You don't know how much it means to me to be back up here calling some hockey and of course giving these girls some much, much needed exposure here at this provincial tournament. There was a lot of debate on what's the best way to do these live streams and stuff and I'm just glad to be involved. That's honestly all I gotta say. We've had some ideas all the way along since January and here we find ourselves Broadcasting from rink two as well. As Morneau will once again cover up and we'll have another face off in the Inferno zone. But I have been treated to some fantastic hockey here in rink two. The goalie's fantastic, all the teams. Again, this is exactly kind of what we saw out of the teams last game. And I maybe goes to my old adage of bend, don't break. Is just, uh, seriously, it's been fantastic to see the Inferno, right? The Lightning have been coming, getting opportunities on net and keeping the puck actively going towards the net. But Morneau, so far, has been a brick wall back there and backstopped her team through 17 minutes and 45 seconds of play to this one nothing lead as the Lightning continue to push, push, and push in this first period. Face off now to the right of Morneau. And the Inferno looking for chance to get out of the zone and maybe turn the tides a little bit on Tatum McKinney here in the late stages of the first period and they will do exactly that as they push the face off ahead and get out of their zone now just bobbled back in 
briefly. I'm not sure, I don't see the official's arm up for an offside, but don't you worry, now an offside arm comes up. I was gonna say there had to be somebody offside there in that little scrum at the blue line on the other side. Fired in and around by the Infernal who will meet it there at the far side. That's Casty Benson coming up with it briefly for the Inferno and kept in, no, actually turned back by Juliana Mark who's skating down ice and turning for it. Hickerson comes up with the puck, but now back the other way come the Inferno and they're a little quicker to realize what's going on on the back end of the Lightning than maybe the Blazers were last game out here on ring two for the Lightning. That puck, a chance on net, off a stick, goes over top into the corner and down the ice. Here comes Jackson for the Lightning. Turn back there by Lloyd again, or sorry, Benson again. And that stick in the lane by Benson at the blue line causes the offside. And we will have a minute 15 to go in this first period. A 1-0 lead for the GHC Junior Inferno on that perfect power play goal from Abigail Nieville in the early stages of the first period. Shot off the side of the net from the Lightning. This one now goes around where the Inferno are looking to come up with the puck and while well, they will get out of their zone. Fired in by Amsing against the opposing number 14, Breland Chason, and now back to Amsing. They've kind of matched up a couple of times. Oh, but the turnover here for the Inferno chance on net. Side of the net and it is Chason who matches up and gets down the ice. He scores the second goal of the game for the Inferno late in this one. And that's one heck of a goal to get things going for the Inferno, who now take a 2-0 lead. And that's to that adage, I got to say, that I've had all weekend where it's, uh, simply put, minimize the risks and maximize the opportunities. And that was all about maximizing the opportunity right there. That puck on the rebound off of McKinney. Back of the net from Chieson. And that one now held on the bobble into the zone by Morneau. And it's Alia, or sorry, Aaliyah, my apologies, Aaliyah Cohen. I did have it right at one point, who gets the assist on the tally by Chase on. This one flipped up and off of the netting. We haven't seen that too much this uh, this weekend. We've kind of been pretty good at keeping the pucks in play. That's twice now this game that it's gone out of play. The one into the bench, the infernal bench, and that, that one still gets me. The reaction of, oh no, I just did that, was, was almost too much for me, as that was just hilarious to kind of open up a Saturday morning Kind of one of those, oh no, I did that moments where it's like, oh, brain cramped and I did that and I can't believe I just did that. But 23 seconds to go here in this first period. The Lightning see it in their own zone. 16 seconds to go in the first period. Time winding down as it went into that corner. So I was just giving you the update, but oh, hey, how about we update the scores? Time winds down here in this first period. The buzzer due to go any second now with two seconds to go on the clock and nothing. That'll do it for the first period. Ladies and gentlemen, a 2-0 lead for the GHC Junior Inferno through one period of play and a stellar period of play from Zoe Morneau who weathered the storm all period long and allowed her team to come out and just capitalize on some great opportunities. That is not to say that the Lightning haven't been pushing all period, that's for sure, right? There was a storm in front of Morneau and that came from a heavy, hard forecheck all period long from the Airdrie Lightning. We'll step aside for a few minutes here to allow me uh, to get some water in me and get a bathroom break and we'll get back to the intermission coverage here in moments.
Alright folks, we're just waiting for the Zamboni to finish clearing the ice. The players should hit the ice here in a mere moment, so I uh, just want an update as the intermission goes into the final stages. We've got goals so far from, and that's why I'm on the mic right now. I've got a correction. Is uh, Yeah, we got a good correction here, and I quite enjoy this one. Abigail Knievel, sorry is the goal scorer that opened the scoring in this hockey game. The AP that's been buzzing around the lightning net all game so far for the GHC Junior Inferno. And then, of course, it was Brelin, I believe Brelin Chieson scoring the goal for the Inferno to put them up 2 nothing late in that second, or first period, sorry. I'm looking at the score clock and it now says second period, so. Brain's kind of faltering here early on on a Saturday morning at still only 10 o'clock and we're just about to enter the second period of play. I'm just going to step aside one more time and we'll be back in a moment or two. All right, let's get set for the second period. The Inferno lead 2-0 after one. A great period from both teams. That's kind of like, honestly, right? Like I've come up with this nice little saying for the weekend that continues to ring true game in, game out. Minimize the risks, maximize the opportunities if you want to at least have a shot to tie or win the game. Because we got to talk about that first one yesterday that was a tie but again that was one where it was just both teams were looking to do that and both teams were doing it well and nobody could quite cash the opportunity in the final couple of minutes of that one and then of course right each team that was trying to win a hockey game yesterday they went out there and did exactly that minimized the risks right low low event scoring chances against and when they got a high opportunity chance in front of the net they were cashing it and putting it home so that's again kind of what's happened in this one so far on the two Inferno goals. They just got in there and Puck kind of comes right through to Knievel. She scores the goal just kind of all alone on the side of the net. No question about it, put it home. Not even a second thought about passing off the puck. And then the second one on the rebound by Chiesa on to hammer home the second goal of the game. And that was again just no hesitation. Put it on net and put it past the keeper to give yourself a 2 nothing lead. So my friends, let's stand up, let's get this ready, let's get going for a second period of action here on Rink 2 in Cold Lake. I'm Tyson Dolany, I've got your call here on Dolany TV all weekend long leading into that semi-final tomorrow morning at 9.15 right here. And then we'll go over next door to the main rink for the gold medal game where I'll be uh, doing something on the broadcast, I can assure you of that. but. As it stands right now, we're not too sure what that looks like yet. 
as that determination is yet to be made just simply because we got a long weekend ahead of us yet. Got a couple of games yet to get there. I think after this one, three games on each rink yet to go to figure out where we're going. And then of course, we'll meet back there at three o'clock for the gold medal game. My friends, the referees are at center waiting for this one to go. Both teams doing their cheers along the bench. Goaltenders taking their respective opposing positions now, opposite of where they were last period, switching the sides of the ice. And now the Inferno will attack going westbound, and the Lightning will attack going eastbound. Both teams are familiar with that because you, uh, that's how you get around Calgary is you go by direction simply like that, right? Glenmore eastbound, Yankee Valley westbound, just be what it is. Here's the shot, save right out of the gate by Zoe Morneau on the first opportunity of the period off the faceoff win in neutral territory by the Airdrie Lightning. 19.51 to go. See, you bet you didn't know the guy calling the hockey game up in Cold Lake knows two integral parts of transportation in both Airdrie and Calgary, but he does. Perks of living down there, right? 19.46 to go in this second period as we're off and running now in the Inferno zone. The Lightning looking to set up their attack down low. They can't get it going and the Inferno will clear it up the boards and chip there beautifully by the AP Knievel who gets it out of the zone. She's had a really solid game so far and I'm just kind of taking a taking an extra time to appreciate the effort from her being that I see the AP on the scorecard and of course, right, I know what that means so we'll uh, We'll spend a few extra moments talking up the game there. So an offside at the Lightning Blue Line will lead to a face-off just outside of the Lightning Blue Line on the near side boards here. Sadie Huck comes in against the captain, Aaliyah Cohen, who, well, Sadie Huck will win it back and it'll go immediately on to a Lightning stick in the neutral zone after the zone clear by the Lightning. Again, another zone clear and given chase. Now Jackson in there trying to get it free for the Lightning. It'll come all the way down on just a shot into the zone, not even meaning to put it on net, but just a shot into the zone that hits Zoe Morneau and she'll just freeze it up there and we'll get back to a face off to her right here in a second. So get the face off to her right. Puck is down and the Lightning win it on the scramble to the side of the crease, or side of the face off dots, sorry. And it'll come back to the point, Amsing, the shot fired, comes down to Jackson who can't spin and fire, so now it goes into the corner for the Lightning. The Inferno battling it there, it comes out of the corner and a chance stopped right there. No doubt about it, the stick of Morneau just comes out and just plays that puck right out of harm's way. That was a bold move. I feel like you stick the stick out there one too many times in that area, you might have something go wrong. But a great play by Morneau to clear the puck as now the Inferno are full pressed to get it out of the zone and they will. It's the goal scorer, the second goal scorer, pardon me, Chieson, getting it down the ice and help with her teammate and down chasing it, the opposing number 14, Amsing, getting it out. And again, those two have traded the puck a couple of times in this game. And here comes Juliana Mark busting down the middle of the ice in a lone partial break, shot fired. And it's, ooh, that will there'll be a goal, my friends. That was one that squeaked by on the far side on Morneau, and she can't believe she got beat on that one. It just, just barely squeaked across from the goal line, and they will rule out a good goal, and it is now 2-1 for the Calgary Inferno on the goal by Mark on the partial break, getting in there and just barely putting it off of Morneau, off the post, and just over the goal line. That one cuts the lead to half, and now we're in for a hockey game here in rink number two this morning. The goose egg broken and now away we go. I don't have to worry about cursing it like I almost did last game. I, I had to, I think it was the uh, Lloyd Blazers game where I had to bite my tongue last second when I was saying something about a shutout kind of thing. So now no more worry for that. Zoe Morneau can just settle in and continue to do what she's done all game long and weather the storm in net for the Inferno. Still up 2-1, mind you. So not a bad position to have to weather a storm from. Face off to her left. Puck won back by the Inferno, who will look to get the puck out of the zone. They'll come off of a couple of bodies in front and out into the middle of the ice, where the Inferno will indeed get it out of the zone. Fired right back in by the Lightning. We've got a penalty coming up, and it looks like it'll be 
against Jody Cobble. we will go off to the box and that'll give the Inferno a two minute power play. It looks like instead, Cobble's coming out of the box. Skating off and they actually just reversed it. Sorry, they just reversed it. And it will be going off to the box, an Inferno player. I didn't see the number. It looks like number 10 over there in the box for the Inferno, Kayla Forsyth. So I guess I should be trying to watch the replays on these things a little bit better than just monitoring the stream kind of thing. But that one goes off a body in front. And so now it is the lightning to the power play instead of turn of events there that I didn't foresee coming. And a save by Morneau on the shot. The first one of the power play, a buck 51 in. And that, uh, we haven't seen that quick strike from Airdrie quite yet in this game. Like, that's nine seconds in. But I believe there was that one point last game where they had three face-offs where they got the puck on net within the first five seconds from the face-off three times in a row. It was, it was quite something. It was like just a master class in pucks on net immediately kind of thing off a of face-off. And that was, that was, there's just been some patterns nice to see out of these teams. And like I said, both teams going hard at it. All the teams going hard at it. Rye sees that one just flipped off her stick, but Hickerson follows up. And the save by Morneau, rebound Morneau, and what a save! Side of the net coming across with the blocker. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's up and getting ready and rowdy about that one. That was a heck of a save from Zoe Morneau on the side of the net chance to keep the Inferno up to one. Player goes down, penalty up coming to the Lightning. And this one, my friends, we've had a lot of four on four in this game. And look at that, if, uh, if we can just pan the camera down to the other side there. I just wanna get a shot of this. The puck came all the way down to the other side of the ice and right out of the net. I mean, as soon as that puck crossed the blue line, Morneau was there to meet it, and I think that's the first time I've seen that this tournament of a goaltender leaving the crease that far to come out and play a puck. So obviously Morneau is feeling it this morning, and I think both goalies, all the goalies we've had on this ring, playing with a little bit of swagger. It's almost a can you one up me because I'm going to one up you situation out here on the ice on rink two this weekend so far. McKinney not busy so far in this second period, but now the Inferno, four on four, looking to change that. We're on four on four for the next 45 seconds, but in behind the net, Mark comes right out in front, gets a second opportunity, falls down. Now a chance from the point for the Lightning, blocked in front there by Cassandra Case. 32 seconds to go in the four on four. As we've now crossed 40 viewers on the stream again, everybody, folks, thank you so much for tuning in early this morning here in Cold Lake. Puck fired down. We're not on a penalty kill or a power play situation as of yet, so that will be an icing against the Calgary Inferno, the GHC Inferno. I'm really not sure if I'm allowed to call them the Calgary Inferno, so somebody please, uh, if you could also give me direction on that, that'd be greatly appreciated. However, the GHC Junior Inferno will find themselves in their defensive zone looking for a face-off win. It's kind of tied up there on the near side boards. Again, you see on the camera, we have an absolutely terrible advantage or vantage point of that. And again, not updating the score. You would, uh, you'd believe at some point I'd figure this one out. That's been now four games that I've struggled to do it all day and it's trending into day number two now. Puck played back by the Lightning. In control of it now, Jackson at center line. Jackson skates through a couple of players, fires it deep into Inferno territory. 15-22 to go, and that puck just bobbles off the stick of Case. And now in front, shot fired wide by Jackson, just missed. And the puck will go back into that near side half wall corner area where we just can't see nothing, but that's all right. The puck fired in, and that one misses wide, just wide off the stick from McK Mia McKinnis-Smith. This one comes out back into neutral territory. It'll be picked up there by Chieson, or sorry, pardon me. That's not Chieson, that's picked up there by Forsyth who fired it in deep. Given Chase the Inferno, they've got it back in the neutral territory. This one's gonna be poked ahead by Sadie Huck, looking to come up with the puck, can't, regrouped by 
the Inferno who will move it out and back up the ice they go into the neutral zone and looking for some kind of puck control. It's gonna be Benson, Benson pushing it ahead. Can't really come up with that puck. So now it goes around the boards and that's where it's gonna be met by Knievel who will see that puck come off the stick on the nifty little poke there from the Airdrie Lightning defender, number 12, Smith. Now I lose my scorecard as the Inferno load up a shot from the point. Knievel given chase into the corner, can't come up with it. But don't worry, a second opportunity allows a wrap around that's denied there by McKinney and back the other way come the Lightning. Going off for a little bit of a defensive line change are the Inferno and it looks like we've got an offside at the blue line. So we'll have a face off just outside of the Inferno zone. Everybody's gonna change up and get things rolling here. It's a 2-1 hockey game, 13.55 to go in the second period. It's been a good one so far, that's for sure. As here comes the face off and it'll be pushed ahead into the inferno zone by the lightning shot fired over top of the net by Ray. Right, again, I'm, I'm like clarity on that one, that's for sure. Is this one shot fired down, saved by Morneau from the seeing eye point shot and well, this one just kind of tucked into the middle of the ice and everybody whacking at it and can't get it going towards the net so the Inferno will be able to clear the puck and it's poked ahead now. This one's going to be up to Chieson who's going to skate with it, fire the puck down deep and it'll be met there in front of the net by a couple of Inferno who see the crease cleared heavily by Zavala who came crashing through and cleared the opportunity there for the Inferno and now Tied up Hickerson with an Inferno player. They're going to let him battle through, and now it's Mark in on net. Stonewalled by Morneau again. Denied again. Puck is loose in the crease. Just sitting there. Kicked out by the Inferno. Shot fired in. Back into the feet it goes. And the attempt is denied, and the Lightning still find themselves down. 2-1 as the puck's just trying to get its way out of the Inferno zone at the blue line. They're going to control and just pace it out. As everybody feeling out what happens next after that mad scramble in the crease in front of Zoe Morneau. Puck is now at the blue line. Just punched ahead in over the line. Shot fired. Tried to glove down by Case. Missed that and it goes into the corner opposing number five's Case and Huck go chasing after it. Huck played it ahead to Jackson. This one will go around and Case again there trying to meet up with it as well with Chasse. Or yeah. A, I had the pronunciation, butchered that one, I know I did. Anyway, shot fired down, Morneau can't come up with it. And it will be into the corner again. Now in, and looks like we got a penalty coming up. That will be against the Inferno. I was like, okay, arms up, somebody just touched up the puck, no whistle went. And the Lightning still in control of this puck, offside now, so it doesn't look like they blow down the play when the goaltender touches the puck. That's been my question all tournament. That's now happened, I think, three times, and they haven't whistled it down until the player has touched the puck. I'm not sure if it's kind of the same rules as the NHL or not, but um, that is an interesting point to be made because if your goaltender can kind of direct the puck into the... Uh, kind of less dangerous zones without taking the penalty first thing. That could be a little advantageous to kill off a little bit of the clock, especially late in a hockey game. Now, face off one by the Inferno. They're going to push it out of the zone and now chasing after it into the neutral. This one turned there. And it'll be at the point. Player knocked down and no call coming up on that one. So the pull on as we go in behind the net. Airdrie looking to get this out in front. Juliana Mark now with the puck there for Airdrie. It'll be fired in front. Nobody can come up with it. Shot fired again in front of the net. And Zavala will see that one go past her at the blue line. This one chipped ahead off the boards. Down the ice it goes 11.15 to go in this second period. We will have an icing call on the power play for the Lightning. Good hockey game so far, let me tell you. 2-1, both goaltenders have been sharp when needed and one maybe more so than the other so far. McKinney getting definitely the defensive support you're looking for as a goaltender in this one and Morneau doing exactly what you're looking for from your goaltender in this one for the Inferno as Mark again looking to bust down the ice. Partial break this time and shot fired denied by Morneau yet again. And this one's gonna go back into the lightning zone and a chance here fired up. 
into Inferno territory. An active stick there by Case will get that puck back into Lightning territory. We find ourselves with 10.42 to go and only 54 seconds left in the power play. Shot fired and saved by Morneau yet again. Whew, all right. 10.36 to go in this second period. Face off, goes back into that half wall and it is immediately cleared. Down the ice it goes on the penalty kill for the Inferno. So the Lightning regroup in their own zone. It'll be fired back up into the neutral area and hits the referee. So the Lightning will regroup after the bounce off the ref and down the ice they go. Sadie Huck collects at the Inferno blue line, leaves for Hickerson. This one pops up. And despite the jab at it from Jasmine Ray, it is a glove save for Zoe Morneau. Yeah, I, uh, I should probably stop and take a drink. I'm feeling like I'm running out a little bit of steam here. And sit down just as I'm finishing off that call and think, hmm, I haven't had a call, uh, I haven't had a drink all period. So it appears that a Lightning player has gone to the box. It uh, looks like it, I'm not sure who that's in there. So we'll skate four on four for what the fourth time this hockey game. Because we had one, two, that one, and then a brief one, and then a second one, or a third one. And now this, I, I guarantee, is the fourth time. If I had a scorecard or something to keep the score sure, but uh, despite my best efforts wearing the headset does not pan out for keeping score with all that as Marks busted into the zone again can't get through everybody Sportner was Jackson but the Inferno pushing it back the other way now and it will be the Lightning standing tall at the blue line and firing it down 2-1 to go in this second period a buck 20 or 2-1 in this second period with 9.27 to go buck 20 to go in the power play pardon me and a score that the Inferno are keeping up well, thanks in no small part to their goaltender Zoe Morneau, who's definitely come out here this morning and impressed so far. 9-12 to go in this second period. The puck goes into the corner and Cameron Cobble comes out with it. She will play it to the middle, but can't get it going any further for the Lightning. And now back the other way, here come the Inferno. Bridal in with a chance, shot fired wide. A good looking opportunity, shorthanded. Still for the next 40 seconds, 46 seconds are the Inferno, and here's another opportunity. It's just got to get out of a skate and try and find the front of the net if you're the Inferno. They can't. Shot fired down, and the Lightning are going to elect to uh, kill this penalty. Sorry, the Inferno are on the power play. I'm mixing up my home and guest here as the Inferno get a good-looking power play opportunity, my pardon, and down the ice will go back again. This one, a little collision at the blue line, allows the puck to get through two players. Stick comes free in the neutral zone, and now the Inferno down a player just briefly trying to recollect that stick. Bridal, of course, that good-looking power play opportunity that just missed wide a few moments ago. Now Case will go chasing after it for the Inferno. It's played back ahead, and two players tangle up, and the puck collected there by the Lightning at the Inferno blue line. Shot Fired through a body into the corner. The power play has expired for the Inferno. It's back out there. Jasmine Ray who will fire the puck side of the net with 17 or 7.49 to go in this second period. Can say I'm fully awake. That's not the problem here. It's just a matter of uh, game number four within less than 24 hours starting to wear on a guy as we get through the midway section of the second period. It is Rye going after it against Lloyd as they battle there along the far side corner. It's back to Mark who goes in towards the net, tries the wrap around, denied there. Inferno still trying to come up with the puck and they do. They're gonna clear it out and down the ice they'll come and an opportunity just hops over the stick of Knievel. She'll go direct in front of the net and just not able to come up with it is Nielsen. And it looks like we're gonna have a hooking call against Zavala, 
of the Airdrie Lightning, and that will give us an opportunity to just sit back and relax a moment and get another drink of water, my friends, because we can't do it without that. All right. This live stream trending well through two periods of play, not even. We're already up to 157 views on the stream, and we're rocking and we're rolling. The Inferno win the faceoff. Batted down again in the middle of the ice by the Inferno, who see themselves on a power play for the second time in a row. This one goes right through the crease of McKinney. And now Knievel batted it towards the net. Player goes down at the side of the net, and it's a standing tall on that save. That just jab by Knievel was McKinney, who's been sharp when needed for the Airdrie Lightning so far. Not tested nearly as much as Morneau in this one so far, but McKinney's gone out there and made some key saves just like that one so far through a period and a half of play on the nine o'clock game in rink number two here in Cold Lake for the U18 Female B Hockey Alberta Provincial Championships this morning. Face off down and in. It'll be one back by the Inferno off the win by the Lightning actually in this one. Now possession for the Inferno, shot fired on to McKinney and she'll make the save and easily hold on to that one with a buck 35 to go in the penalty for the Lightning. I must say, this is actually the most active the chat has been on Dolan TV. I know the chat's been pretty active over on Cold Lake Ice TV. They've kind of got a little bit more of a Cold Lake crowd than I do kind of per se, despite some of my best videos on YouTube being about Cold Lake. But as we currently find ourselves, we're starting to pick up some steam over here in rink two on day number two. At one point up to 45 viewers. And now as the Inferno control behind the net, they're firing the puck in front. They've still got a minute 13 to go on this power play. Puck in around behind the net and a battle there for it as in the secondary Inferno player. It'll be Benson coming into support and chasing it out of the zone is Simone Stringer. Stringer fires it off of the skates of Cassidy, or Cassandra, sorry, Cassandra Case. And that will be back into the Inferno zone. They're looking to break out with 48 seconds to go. Just get past the stick. That one might work. Missed there was Knievel, and it'll be down into Airdrie Lightning zone for an icing. The Inferno lead 2-1 with 41 seconds to go in the penalty to the Lightning. They'll find themselves in the defensive zone setting up for a faceoff to the right of Morneau, who's been sharp all game and definitely helping keep her team up 2-1 in mid, well, we're, we're getting into the back half of this one, I guess you could say. We're four minutes into the back half now. Solidly into the back half as Hickerson comes up with it for the Lightning. It'll be batted down by a stick of, oh, back in front, and what a save from McKinney to keep that one out. What a jab there in front as the Inferno just see a puck just sneak into the crease, and somebody's aware in front that that puck was there and jabbed it jabbed at it and almost was able to put a quick five hole on McKinney but again standing tall McKinney makes the save face off to McKinney's left Inferno win it back they'll get it back kind of to the half wall where they're just trying to come up with his puck and direct it again into the middle of the ice Inferno come up with the puck at the half wall they're going to see it come right onto a lightning stick and cleared down with 10 seconds to go on the penalty kill and this one will be all the way down the ice and the penalty, my friends, will be over on this one as the player for the Lightning, Zavala, will step out of the box and now back the other way come the Inferno. They're coming down the ice, charging hard as Chase on all the way to the end board corner and taken out there, but kept in there by the Inferno at the point. Shot to flex off the stick of Hickerson in front. And that one will go into the corner yet again. The Inferno come up with it. They're starting to push a little bit here after a couple of power plays. They've had some good looks lately and now looking to keep capitalizing. It's been one of those games though. Definitely the Inferno have capitalized when the opportunities have been there. And the Lightning have kind of pushed hard all game to try and make sure this one is as level or close to level as possible. And here come the Lightning yet again down the ice. Cameron Cobble skating for it. Shot fired into the stick of Morneau. And denied is Cobble. 
That's kind of what I'm getting at. It's definitely uh, definitely been one of those games. I, I'd say the Lightning have kind of controlled the play five on five through the first 36-ish minutes. But the Inferno, when they've gotten good looks, they've come hard at the net and tried to force the issue. And of course, they've done that enough to have a 2-1 lead. And now the Inferno will chip this puck ahead. And that was looking like it could have developed into something, but it's sealed off there by Zavala, who just plays the body into the boards and denies the opportunity into the zone. This one case will play it back at or near her own blue line and fire it in to the Lightning zone with 4.09 to go in this second period. The Lightning will come up with it in their own end. They'll chip it out. And now here's Juliana Mark, who's been dangerous all game. And that one just eludes her a little bit. But she's still got a chance to drive the net. A nifty poke check last second prevents that from going anywhere further. But a chance now for Sadie Huck. Fired off the blocker of Morneau. Morneau back in position, waiting for the puck to come in as it dives into the crease. Chance here for Ray. Now a chance for Huck. Shot fired and it goes wide. Off potentially a body in front. 3.36 to go in the second period. And let me tell you, that's what I'm talking about. The Lightning, they keep coming and they keep getting that puck on net and having some great looking opportunities. But it's Morneau who's been standing tall in her net all morning long, making some great saves to preserve the 2-1 lead. And it's, it's not often as a, as a broadcaster you can sit there and watch a team spend some time in their zone and think, man, they're doing an excellent job. And that's very much so in large part to the goaltender Morneau so far against the Lightning to preserve the 2-1 lead. Again, who covers it up and we will have another face off. But that's not to say, like I said, I, I always come back with that. McKinney's been excellent when tested so far by the Inferno. McKinney, right, two key saves here in the past couple of minutes in this second period against the Inferno. And now again, the Lightning pushing in front of the net. Morneau sees this one bouncing around. There's about seven bodies down in front of the net. I had no clue where that puck went. It somehow went to the corner. And now starting away are the Inferno. The Lightning battling this one into the boards along their blue line. And now coming up with it, a chance skating into it for the Inferno shot fired, turned aside by McKinney, who again, all of a sudden, just out of the middle of the ice, snatches up that puck and denies the Inferno another bid for goal number three. And that's what I was just talking about, right? When tested, McKinney stood tall as well. And we're playing one heck of a hockey game at 2-1 with 2.51 to go in the second period. Well, let's just have a little bit of fun here to wind down this second period. A couple more good chances, a couple more good looks. Keep the score right where it is, and let's get the storybook going for the third period. Cameron Cobble back the other way for the Lightning. She sees it go off a skate, and now the Inferno will get a chance to come back the other way. Chase on regroups the center for the Inferno, and they'll start the attack. Puck coming down into the zone now. Chase on chips it towards the net, blocked in front by two Lightning players. Coming charging after it. Simone Stringer in there now, getting it in front of the net and Stringer will see it come back to her after a couple of deflections off a couple of sticks directed on net from the point by Case. Case sees that one go nowhere and it's kept in by Forsyth who will see it go batted around the boards by the Lightning and now again kept in by Forsyth for the time being. Or pardon me that might be Jillian Chasse who kept it in there for the Inferno. The puck now back by the Lightning, back around behind the net, and the Lightning will meet it there. Cobble, I believe that's Cobble, keeps it in for the Lightning. Chance in front, and all kinds of confusion in from the net there is just a little over committed with Marneau up on an edge, and the Lightning will pot the goal to tie it 2 2. I want to see the replay of that one. Boy, oh boy, that one looked like it just kind of got up on Morneau quickly as that one goes around the boards. That was, of course, Cobble keeping it in, and then it just kind of bobbles in front. And it just it looks like it deflected off a case in front. I seem to have missed that deflection. And that's what caused Morneau to slide a little bit extra to the right, and that is how it was jammed in right there to make it a 2-2 hockey game. So I said, just keep it 2-1. Hey, I'm good with 2-2. 2-2 heading into the third period. Light me up. A tie game on day two of Provincials where 
Chaos could break loose. Don't mind me at all. A buck 30 to go in this first period. Shot uh, coming from the Lightning. Fired on to Morneau and the glove save. Kind of stole it away. It bounced out of her glove. And then she just picked it up and fired it back into the glove. Tucked it into the hip pocket and hold on to it for now. Buck 25 to go in this second period. 2-2. Two -two. We find ourselves. Oh, hey. Look at what I just remembered to do. Update the score first thing, right? Huh. Joke's on me. I actually got it this time. All right. So, 2-2 two -two we find ourselves as the puck is just clearing the zone. And back the other way now come the Infernal looking to regain the lead. Chance in on net. Shot fired up over top of the net. Off of a stick of a Lightning player in front. And now cleared back out into the middle of the ice. It's Stringer coming up with the puck. This one now into the lightning zone. I'm just trying to see if I recognize any of the names here in the coaching situation, but I don't. Uh, this one out of the zone now for the lightning as they just see it chip back in by an inferno stick and we'll go down the ice. 44 seconds to go in this second period as we're humming along now in the early morning game on rink number two. This one into the neutral. It's gonna miss a couple of sticks and then play on to a lightning stick in the middle and now Jackson will pick it up there and actually control it for the lightning as she'll wheel through the neutral. Shot fired, glove save again by Morneau. So both goalies, you can say quite honestly, have been out there giving it their all so far and both goalies evenly matched in the goals against right now. So both teams looking for that next one and I don't know, both goalies, I don't know if they're gonna give up a next one. 2-2 we find ourselves, seconds clicking off the board. The Inferno did get a late goal last period. They're looking to maybe push right here, but they aren't gonna be able to get it down the ice cleanly and it'll go all the way dumped into the lightning zone. And that, my friends, will pretty much kill the clock with two seconds and no seconds left on the board. That is another period of hockey gone on by. And it's a 2-2 tie after two periods of play here in Cold Lake on rink number two on day two of the U18 Female B Hockey Alberta Provincial Championships. Rest. End. What a day so far. We're going to step aside for the time being. We're going to run the sponsor ads. You're going to go back on mute for few minutes so as we don't end up uh, getting any copyright strikes on the stream that's why the stream is muted in case you ever see I'm not on the mic that's kind of what's going on there and we'll talk to you in a few moments time we're gonna go grab a drink cookie from the break room and we'll see what we can get going here in this third period in moments time after the ice is clean
two, check one, two. Check, check. I'll take this mic, I guess, and we'll uh, make it work. Check one, two, check one, two. All right, I'm really not sure if we've got this working or not. We'll see if this uh, seems to be a little bit loud, but it seems like it should be working for us here. Um, I didn't grab your name though. Uh, my name's Mason. All right, Mason, we're gonna cut away from the uh, sponsorships here. Just wanna quickly ask you, you're, you're the brother of Sadie Huck, number five for the Airdrie Lightning. Yeah. Of course, now I did preface the uh, whole game this morning by saying I am from Airdrie myself. Ooh coming up here or an original cold laker call in tonight today's hockey games and yesterday's hockey games so number one i guess you're up here in cold lake yeah. watching sadie play hockey what's been your thoughts of cold lake so far and the facilities and stuff like that <laughs> i've been liking it here it's like really nice so yeah. then i'm going to just quickly transition because obviously we want to get in as much about sadie as possible kind of try and find out as much as we can about the players on the ice this tournament kind of what does your sister bring out there she's been fun to watch yeah. on a broadcaster's point of view but as a little brother what's it been uh, like watching your big sister play the tournament so uh, far it's really fun because she's like one of the best on the team and it's really fun to see her skate around other people and so, sometimes get goals so you yourself do you play hockey down yeah. in Erdry? what uh, level of hockey are you playing uh, I'm playing uh, U13 City U13 City, so is that uh, you're playing against Calgary teams or you're playing uh, more against the regional teams? I'm playing against uh, teams like Banff, Airdrie, Canmore, and uh, <coughs> sometimes Okotoks. So yeah. dad's putting on a lot of miles, mom and dad are putting on a lot of miles, I assume, because yeah. with two kids in hockey, I guess you don't always get the same parent to come out and cover. So how special is it to be able to come up here? Your season's probably done, I take it? Yeah. So you get to come up here, finish off Sadie's season, and kind of finish off hockey all yeah. as a family for maybe potentially, I'm gonna guess, first time or second time this season. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. So, I guess, what are you looking forward to most about the rest of the tournament? Uh, I hope that Airdrie uh, wins this game and the next game, so they might have a chance in the finals, because I want to see a final game. All right, well, I look forward to seeing more yeah. of this tournament. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to take the headset from you, and I think the audio worked. If not, uh, my apologies back home, folks. Thanks so much. All right, just checking audio here again on the stream. It seemed to be a little high there. Sorry, folks, if anything was off with the audio. Trying my best to get the crowd involved this weekend here in Cold Lake, and I think that was a pretty effective way to do it. Getting the brother of Sadie Huck to come give us a little insight into what his tournament experience has been so far, and of course what it's like watching his big sister on the provincial stage. So. We find ourselves a 2-2 hockey game in the intermission for the second period. And looking forward to what should be a good finish in this one. Anything else I can tell you? I don't really think. I think I'm about talked out for the intermission, so we'll go back to the sponsor ads for a minute here and we'll uh, pick things up in moments as the Zamboni, I guarantee you, is a few seconds away from completing the ice clear, so we'll go back live in a few moments.
My friends, it sounds like it's time for some hockey again. The music's kicked back in here in the rink. I'm going to stay sitting down, though. I, I think my back will thank me at about 5 o'clock tonight if I stay sitting down for the time being. So we'll just, uh, we'll just do that. We'll just kick back, relax, enjoy a moment, let the teams hit the ice, and we'll get going. A 2-2 hockey game between the Airdrie Lightning and the GHC Junior Inferno as we currently sit. It's been a good game so far, and I'm really looking forward to that continuing the rest of the way home this afternoon, that is for sure. Sorry, it's still only 10.48, my friends. This morning, this morning, Tyson. Let's get it going, shall we? The Airdrie Lightning have hit the ice. I think the Inferno are in the tunnel or just on the bench. I can't exactly see. There's a couple of chairs in my way now. You'd you, you think a guy would try a little harder for as much as I complain. There's the Inferno. I knew they were right down there. I could see something moving around down there. And there comes out Zoe Morneau for the light or uh, for the Inferno back onto the ice, ready for the third period. Tatum McKinney as well on the ice for the Lightning. Both goaltenders pitching one heck of a gem on each side of the ice. And they'll switch ends again. And again, that's the thing too, just, just so you're kind of aware. You guys are a little more spoiled here on the stream than I am in the rink. What I mean by that is you get logos for whose goals are where and what. I get a home and guest. And thankfully after game number two yesterday, I figured out the white jerseys are home, the dark jerseys are away, so yada, yada, yada. It took me some time, but um, we've got it figured out, and thankfully, like I'm saying, you guys, uh, you guys got it a little easier back at home than a guy like me down here in Cold Lake has, but again, right? Like, for as much as I'm complaining, just try harder. Simple, simply stated. All right, so here's Sadie Huck. We had her brother on in the animation. She draws in for the faceoff, and the puck is down, and the Inferno win it back. It's scrambled up to the near side boards, now pushed back, and the Inferno will look to come into the Lightning zone. Puck down in behind McKinney. McKinney sees this one played there by her D, and it'll be moved out, and ooh, off a stick instead, and coming back the other way. Chason fires that just wide of the net. McKinney didn't even have to move a muscle, really, to steer that one wide. This one. Goes down the ice, and it indeed will be icing against the Airdrie Lightning. So right out of the gate, that good-looking shot, 30 seconds in by the GHC Inferno will force an icing call on the clear by the Lightning, and we'll have a face-off to the left of McKinney as Hickerson goes over to give McKinney some instructions on this face-off, or maybe some encouragement, or maybe a little just, let's go. Just a little let's go, we're in this. 2-2 two -two with 19.26 to go in the third period. Oh, hey, Tyson, update the period bug, eh? Let's do it. Ding, ding, point, point three. Oh, now, now, we're, now we're playing the good tunes. All right, puck comes out in front. Chance there for Bridal, can't get the puck going, and now it goes into the corner as the lightning see the Inferno directing it in front of the net yet again, and now coming out, Juliana Mark, who's been absolutely buzzing this game. Jackson plays it ahead. Nifty stick there prevents the Lightning from getting the clean zone entry, but they still enter, and it's backhanded down by Jackson, who finds Hickerson winding up for the slap shot, fired off the body in front of Nielsen, and it'll go into the far side half wall where the Lightning will keep control of it, and that was Dakota Williams playing it down into the corner. Jackson firing it, looking for an opportunity to get it to the front of the net, can't find anything there, and I gotta slow down. I gotta slow my roll here because we got a long ways to go today yet. And I'm getting a little jacked up for this third period because it's been one heck of a good hockey game. Now coming down the ice, charging after it is Cassidy Morosiak. And she will see it go down instead for an icing. And it will be 18.29 to go with a face off to the left of Morneau in the Inferno zone. Puck now set for the face off drop and we'll see who comes up with it here. You know every face off in a defensive zone now is just as key as the one before it because my goodness, a little bit of pressure now on both teams, 2-2 game as we head into 
the final 18 minutes of the third period. We've already seen a tie, so honestly, if it ends in a tie, I guess both teams just have to sit there, play some conservative defense, and not worry too much about things. But at the same rate, wouldn't it be great to see both teams just go out there, give that extra push at the end of the game, and see if they can't break this one open without risking giving up the lead as here come the Inferno, exactly what I'm talking about. Shot fired, McKinney the save, drops down on top of it and will freeze the puck with 18.09 to go, denying the captain in the Inferno, Aaliyah Cohen. So now we see ourselves with the 2-2 tie and a face off to the right of McKinney in the lightning zone. Pucks down and it'll be bobbled off the face-off dot. There's, there's been a couple of weird drops by the rest where the puck's like gone directly somewhere. This one goes to the center of the ice. Stop talking Tyson and focus on what's going on. As that was Knievel looking for it in the slot. Couldn't come up with it and now played ahead by Hickerson of the Lightning trying to get it out of her own zone. The Inferno, a little bit more push here in this third period than I think they had to start either of the other two periods as they come out and keep that puck alive in the zone an extra 10 seconds longer than I think anybody on the Lightning would have liked it. And that's a massive collision. Both players collide. Penalty arm goes up and see the players skate to the bench. I'm not sure who's getting the call. That will be the Inferno getting the call. So it's gonna be number 17 for the Inferno going to the box. Aaliyah Cohen on that one. After both players just collided and went down in a heap. And it looks like they're gonna have someone else go serve the penalty. I'm not sure if Cohen's a little shaken up after that one. Uh, Piers will have an update on that in a little bit's time. So. It seems... Maybe they got a little banging and crashing going. Parents a little on the pins and needles here. And looks like everything waved off there. One parent waving everybody off, so it looks like everything's good. Not exactly sure what that's all about, but it'll be a five on four for the Airdrie Lightning here on the third period with 17.23 to go. Claire gets down in front. Now a couple players tangled up. Stick goes over the goaltender's hand of Morneau. And it'll go all the way length of the ice for a clear by the Inferno. This one played there by Zavala. Now onto the stick of Cameron Cobble. And it'll go down the ice and away go the Lightning on the power play. Looking to start an attack here in the offensive zone of the Inferno. This one now along the near side blue line chipped up off a player in front. That was Morgan Lloyd, seeing that one go up off of her. This one now back to the point, starting in, and the Lightning will bobble it off a pass and back into their own zone they go to regroup and restart this power play. A buck 05 left in it. And now comes Juliana Mark on a free skating puck, shot fired off a body in front. That was Morosiak in front getting a leg on it, and now looking for it, the Lightning Trying to get an opportunity here on the power play. Not really one yet with 48 seconds to go. They'll dump it back in right onto the stick of an Inferno player. That's Stringer now carrying it in. Stringer going for a skate on the penalty kill. Taken out last second. Just narrowly avoids the post. Some nifty edge work while sliding on the shin pads to avoid sliding into the post. And back the other way comes Jackson for the Lightning. Jackson. We'll play it up, back to the point. This one goes down and now a race for it. Cassidy Case tripped up and a call coming, but the Inferno continue to carry it and Case back on, trying to get into the offensive zone and whack there, can't free up the puck, a save by McKinney. And there will be a penalty for tripping assessed to the Lightning player, Amsing, and down to the box she goes. Kind of giving her head a shake after hitting into the boards there. A little bit of uh, hard defense back the other way and collided into the boards. And yet again, my friends, for the fifth time this game, this like this uh, complete anomaly so far in this tournament, we'll skate five on five. 
two minute final lead to the Lightning. Seven seconds to go in the penalty to the JHC Junior Inferno. Cameron Cobble skates off the bench to come out and kill this penalty. She's an effective penalty killer for the Lightning based on what I've seen through a game and a half. Definitely one of those players that you like to have getting the puck out and getting back when needed to prevent a chance and of course try and change the tide as she is here with the four check now on the penalty kill getting in there and getting the attack going. That's Hickerson at the point keeping it in and now it's down to Cobble who's going to fire a shot off a stick and a good support by the Inferno will allow them to get the puck out and now start the power play after the time's expired off the penalty. This one chipped by the Lightning. They will fire it all the way down length of the ice and the Inferno regroup in their own end. Looking to bust out and create a chance to get this puck going. This one misses Benson at center ice. So the Lightning will just skate some seconds off the clock in their own end. Fire it off the boards. It goes past Ray and it will go on down the length of the ice. 14.35 to go in this second period couple of penalties haven't really changed what is and will continue to be for the time being a great hockey game here in Cold Lake on rink number two. This one goes back behind the net. 14.20 to go in this third period as the power play just kind of going nowhere so far for the Inferno. They'll collect it. Case around the boards will get it up and out of the zone. An effort there last second by Tylea Smith to try and keep that one in isn't successful and now the Lightning back behind their own net looking to get it out the Inferno keep it in now behind the net of McKinney the puck is this one goes along the boards into that corner can't really see what's going on there because well they haven't been able to all tournament backhand opportunity for Knievel can't get the shot on net she'll fire a second opportunity chance there and denied by the pad of McKinney another denial on the pad skating through the crease was Chiesa on looking for a rebound but couldn't cash it and there you go. I was saying the penalty or the power play wasn't really going anywhere for the Infernal. How about saving the best for last? That last seven seconds with three seconds left on the board, the best chunk of time the Infernal had on the power play and a couple great chances in front denied by McKinney. And the goaltending, my goodness, I cannot stop raving about the goaltending. It has been phenomenal this weekend, and I've loved every second of what I've seen out of all the goalies here on rink number two this weekend. Now back after the penalty expires, the Lightning get going, and it will be a tripping call to the Inferno. So we're right back on the special teams, and that may be kind of the par for the course down the stretch is... The ref's kind of calling everything at the moment, and that's fine and dandy. It's just a matter of now somebody's got to find a way to do something on the special teams if indeed that's how it's going to be the rest of the way home. 13-18 to go in the third period, 2-2 the game. Huck draws in for the face-off draw on the power play for the Lightning. She'll win it back, and the Lightning will see it come back to Amsing, who fires it across the ice and down to Jackson. Jackson fires it off across the crease and the Lightning continue to control it. Dakota Williams fires it in front, just misses Huck back door, looking for that tippity tap. Shot fired off the backhand of Jackson, can't get the puck going and now Bridal ties up the player and that'll allow Case to get it up the boards but stolen there by the Lightning. They'll keep it in on the power play and they're working the zone here in the first 30 seconds of this third period power play. 12.45 to go in the third period. Jackson fires it down onto a stick of an Inferno, goes off of Jackson on the clearing attempt, and now both players tie up, looking to get this puck free. A desperation attempt gets it to the assistant captain, Cassie Morosiak, who will get it down the ice and kill off the first minute of this power play. Actually, hold on. There were a couple seconds I was kind of leading myself, giving myself some time to move. And uh, in fact, with exactly a minute to go in the power play, an icing call happens and we'll have a face off to the left of McKinney in the lightning zone. 2-2, the score we find ourselves with as we approach the midway point of the third period. This one comes up the ice and into Inferno territory. They'll quickly, I mean quickly clear the puck out and it'll be cleared then 
to the end of the Inferno yet again by the Lightning. Looking to dump and chase on this power play as time winds down, right? Hey, you know what? You know what? They had good zone time for the first 30 seconds. But if remember what happened last power play for the Inferno. It was the last 10 seconds that mattered most, getting the big chances. So the Lightning looking for a little bit of magic in a bottle here to try and get that going as well. 2-2 we continue to sit at here in the third period as the puck just keeps bouncing around here in and out of the Lightning zone. The Inferno doing a stellar job killing off the final minute of this power play. Shot fired onto McKinney, another stonewall save with eight seconds left on the clock. And I don't know, maybe it's just when there's a penalty on the board with uh, less than 10 seconds to go, the Inferno like putting the puck on net. I don't know, that's two penalties in a row. One for and one for against so far that they've been able to do it. Puck's down, face off goes back to the Lightning into the near side half wall. They're looking for something, anything to get it off that boards and uh, free it up. And that's gonna be the Inferno doing. Bridal directs the puck on net off the stick of McKinney in front, and it goes back along that half wall, looking for something to come off again. I honestly, quite honestly, from the angle I have, can't see anything, and it, it frustrates me, but what do you do? It's gonna be chipped out by the lightning there off the boards, and now down the ice comes Ray. Ray's gonna look for the shot, drag it on net, and Morneau, the backhand drive by Ray, denied. What an effort by Morneau to come up with that puck and just hold steady in the crease and prevent that one from going in. Paddle down, pads on the ice, and stuck with her to make the stop. So we'll have a face off with 10.53 to go. Bruno and McKinney have been one heck of a tandem for this hockey game, going toe to toe at both ends of the ice and making sure this one stays right where it's been for a long time now. We'll have a couple of teams running past us here, so. This one tipped on net. Cobble's gonna, or sorry, Mark's gonna fire a shot. Can't get it going, and now it's played back in front, cleared out by the Inferno. Who will get it down the ice? And now giving chase, Bridal looking to get past Zavala, and looks like behind the play we've got a tripping call. And I think Trinity Amsing knew that as soon as it happened because she was kind of already skating over to the box before the whistle even went. Two minutes to go on a penalty, and like I said, this may be the theme the rest of the way home in this hockey game where we're on the special teams the whole way. Not a problem, like I said, but just one of those things where one team at some point has got to bust through if you want to try and change the score, if that's going to be the case. But at the same rate, one penalty kill is also looking to not break the rest of the way home, if that's going to be the case. So, one of those things, it, it's kind of weird. I'm a guy who, uh, quite honestly has normally in my career been a homer kind of broadcaster for whatever team I'm broadcasting for. In this tournament you kind of find yourself broadcasting a little differently, kind of trying to keep it down the middle as much as possible, give some players some spotlight and that's about it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's quite the experience so far through four games here in Cold Lake as now the Inferno find themselves coming across the blue line, looking for a pass into the middle, they get it but it goes right through Hickerson and caused just enough chaos and McKinney will freeze it at the side of the net and hold sway for the faceoff. We're having a heck of a hockey game here. We're having a heck of a hockey weekend and uh, kind of excited to see where this starts trending after this game, right? You'll kind of have a picture of where we're headed more or less after next game here at rink number two, but as we currently head into the final stages, the final 10 minutes of this one, you kind of get where it's going, right? Rink two's been that competitive edge where every team on rink two has come in and worked hard, gotten great goaltending, and really battled for every inch on the ice. And no matter what the score has been in any of the games, all the games have been absolutely fantastic to watch this tournament here in rink number two, and I appreciate you guys being along for the ride here on the channel on Dolan TV this weekend. The lightning fire a shot and just miss over the, uh, the net. Here we go. This one goes down the ice, cleared there. And we'll see what goes here into the corner as Sadie Huck comes up with the puck. Sorry, just trying to catch up with, um, just trying to catch up with what's going on 
with the uh, with the chat as we see the puck tied up along the end boards. Now the major happening there, thankfully, as I'm not really fully paying attention. But hey, well behind the scenes of how it works, right? I'm I'm a once upon a time broadcaster, not looking to do much with the career anymore, so not too worried about being the most perfect out here in Cold Lake this weekend. Just Worried about having a little bit of fun and bringing you guys a great tournament in action as Sadie Huck carries this puck ahead. Turn back there by number 16 in the Inferno, Jillian Chasse. And now all of a sudden a chance there. Cobble fell down last second or she could have had a step on the defense of the Inferno. And back the other way now come the GHC Inferno. It'll come right on it to McKinney. Off a stick, or that could have been a chance on net with McKinney down and out. And how about this? Back the other way, a three on O for the Lightning that just disappears into the corner. Chance here. The Lightning get a chance, but a clear. Last second, Morneau made the save, and then a good stick in the crease. Clears the puck last second. That net was wide open. And the Inferno dodge a bullet there, that is for sure. And now back the other way come the Lightning yet again. They're pushing hard here as this one's going. Ray's going to fire the puck, saved by Morneau. And my goodness, I keep, I keep talking about it. You can't stop talking about it. The treat we are getting in net from all these ladies this weekend is just fantastic. Quite honestly, I have been blown away uh, what the teams have brought in terms of the quality of goaltenders here this weekend at the tournament. And I'm looking forward to that continuing if I haven't said that a hundred times already. Puck along the near side boards will squeak out of the zone, go back into the lightning zone. We've got just over seven minutes to go here in the third period. I already feel like my tank's empty in terms of what's left in my lungs in the uh, midsection to call hockey games, but we got two more to come up today. We've got the Lakeland Jaguars, the host team playing their only Game of the tournament scheduled at current over here in rink number two next. So make sure to join me for that. It's my first game with them, so I may be unfamiliar with the names, but we'll try and learn as quick as possible so that I don't go embarrassing myself here in rink number two. This one gets past the defender at the blue line, Amsing, and now back the other way come the Inferno. It's Molly Archer getting a chance to get that puck into the middle. And looks like we'll have a penalty coming up, a cross check there by the Lightning. And 6.23 to go in this third period. We have yet another penalty. All right. Don't mind me, we're having a good one here. Waiting for the faceoff to be dropped. Little bit of discussion here from the referees. They're going to chat with the officials. Not really sure what this is about. I was kind of trying to wait for the faceoff and missed whatever got them two together over at the timekeeper's box. That's okay. They'll discuss it. Two minutes. Two minutes for cross checking. So thumbs up. We're good. Never mind. I guess they were checking to see if it was a five minute or something. Didn't look that. Uh, that's serious, but hey, you know what? Sometimes you gotta double check, and here comes Jackson back into the Inferno zone, getting a shorthanded opportunity that bounced into the crease. Morneau scrambling for it, and again, sealing off the chance and allowing the defense to clear the puck. They are the Inferno with Morneau in net. Solid, solid effort. And Hickerson will see this one come along the side of the boards. Now cleared there by Case, she'll get it down the ice, and it'll go all the length of the ice where, of course, the, the Lightning will meet it there. And we'll see this puck come up into the Inferno zone. Just had, uh, I, I love the uh, spectators when they come up to me and just mess with me a little bit. You, you can notice when all of a sudden I flub out on a sentence that usually somebody's breathing over my shoulder kind of thing. That save by Morneau will have a face off to her right, but I absolutely love it, right? Because in a normal broadcasting situation, you're kind of in your own area. You've got your own separated situation where all your equipment is and everything's good and you're not worried. 
but over here in rink number two, you kind of got a situation where you're right mixed in on the concourse. Everybody's walking past you, tapping you on the shoulder, letting you know what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, letting you know if you can do something better. And you know what, then all of a sudden, people get to know you a little bit and they start messing with you. And I absolutely love that about doing a hockey tournament is you just get that kind of camaraderie as the weekend goes along. Shot fired there from the Lightning. A little bit of disappointment, that one missed wide. And now the Inferno will be able to clear the zone as it looks like I think everybody's kind of worn down after this game. We're inside the last five minutes. And it looks like the legs are moving a little slower than they were at the start of the third period, or first and second period. But how about this? Sadie Huck coming in, getting the legs moving. Morneau will make the stop, and that'll be denied yet again with 4.36 to go on the clock here in this third period. Morneau standing tall on the last three, four chances is what has kept this one right where we are in this third period. We're having a good one here, that's for sure. All right, just crossed that 50 view mark. You gotta love to see that. Looks like um, we got a skater coming out for the Lightning with 13 seconds to go in the penalty. And they're trying to figure out who's gonna take the face off. It's gonna be Hickerson on this offensive zone penalty kill draw. And it'll be fired back in there. And now the Lightning looking for the attack to come forward, but the Inferno on the power play still trying to get out of the zone. And it'll be tied up and Amsing up with it. It'll be left there and Huck will come up with the puck yet again for the Inferno. She'll dive into the zone, or sorry, from Lightning. The Inferno, as she dives into the zone, turn her back and that leaves us with no penalty time left. Chance here for the Lightning. Saved by Morneau again. Just throwing out the pad and hoping it hits her and that's exactly what happens as the lead isn't going anywhere for either team. 2-2, two, two, the tie remains. Chance here for the Lightning again. The pad out for Morneau yet again. And the save by Morneau to keep the game tied. All kinds of pressure here from the Lightning. 2-2 two, two we remain. Third period, 3.51 to go. And we are in for one heck of a finish here. The Infernal players skating to the bench, giving the old pump up. You love to see it. You love to see the personality from players on the ice. They know what this moment's all about but that's not gonna stop them from having a little bit of fun. And I am absolutely here for that this weekend. The Inferno come out of it. And I think that's a big thing from the opening ceremonies was, you know what, this is a big moment. This is a moment you might never get in your life again, but you know what, take the moment, enjoy it as much as possible and have as much fun as possible. As we go down into the final 3.30 here at rink number two, the puck played out, Zavala will meet it at center ice for the Lightning. You know what, screw not emptying the tank. We're gonna go do that right now. We're gonna have a little bit of fun and we're gonna enjoy this right here down the stretch. Might, 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 need, might need to choose a, choose a better set of words there, but don't mind me. As this one, side of the net, Morneau bounces on it. Save made yet again, the Inferno again. As soon as that puck goes off of Morneau, they're clearing the puck out of the ice. That blue paint and down the ice it is into the lightning zone. That one met there by Knievel. She swipes at it, misses it. 2.50 to go in the third period. And the Lightning have the puck behind their own net. Couple of bodies in front, and I can't really see what's going on, but it's going to be Jackson skating it up, and away she goes. Jackson down the ice, going one-on-one, -on -one, trying to get past. Can't, and denied there by the defense of the Inferno. Now trying to come up with it is Emily Nielsen. They'll play it into the corner, will the Inferno, and now it'll be played directed back off the side of the net and behind the net of Morneau. 2.22 to go and both teams looking to just try and finish this one out. Best result they can hope for is a win. Worst result they can really hope for is a tie kind of at this situation. Player falls down to the ice and that will not, nothing will come of that. 2.14 to go in this third period. We've got ourselves a hockey game developing in the final 2.15 right here. Line change. Completed for the Inferno. Face off Juliana Mark against, I believe that's Chase on taking the draw for the Inferno. It's moved out by the Inferno. 2.09 on the clock to go. This puck played down and a little bit more oomph in their step from the Inferno here into the slot. Chase on shot, fire, scores! Big goal, second one of the game 
Fortier saw it and Schultz put the Inferno up 3-2 just inside the last two minutes to go. A buck 59 on the clock. Chieson's got the goal for the Inferno. They're back in the lead 3-1, or 3-2, pardon me. And that was a huge one right there to just cash that side of the net. Puts it home, McKinney beat, and that will be a marker that very well. Given the way this one's gone, stand or not stand at all down the stretch in the last minute 59 of this hockey game as Huck will come up with it for the Lightning who are now in desperation mode to try and get this third goal of the game to tie the game and hopefully walk away with the tie at worst. But the way this one's gone, I don't even know if we're done at 3-3 if we get there. The puck back the other way now for the Inferno who will look to try and kill as much of the clock as possible in the offensive zone, grind down the Lightning and just finish this one off and take home a W. The puck though met there at center ice for the Lightning. They'll move it there, Cobble plays it in and it'll be moved back in to center ice. Both, uh, both Cobbles are out there right now, Jody and of course, sorry I'm looking at my roster here not seeing a Cameron Cobble out there on the ice for Airdrie, looking to even this game up. This puck played there, Cobble, that's Cameron, coming up with the puck ahead to Sadie Huck, who sees it go ahead over to Jody Cobble, and now Huck comes up with it. Players lost her stick. Puck goes down into the corner, it's met there, and Amsing will not be able to keep it in for the Lightning. 46 seconds to go in this game, a 3-2 lead for the Inferno, and here we go, 40 seconds now. As the Lightning net empty, looking to keep this game going, and Juliana Mark can't get the puck out of the referee's skates, and it's a two-on-two -two back the other way with Mark coming back in now. Two-on-one shot, saved by Morneau, the glove denying Jackson on the partial open-up shot in the slot. 26.4 to go in this third period. And my goodness, let me tell you, it is filled up in here since I last looked at the crowd. We've got a great finish on rink number two here in Cold Lake with 26.4 seconds to go. The Lightning will call their timeout and we'll have things steady Eddie for the next 30 seconds. I'm gonna take a chance to grab a drink of water because I'm gonna need it here down the stretch in the last 26.4. You knew this one was good. Can't deny that this hockey game wasn't gonna be good down the stretch. And you know what, a late dramatic goal to make it 3-2. The Lightning, they've been pushing all game, never, never gave up on the attack, relentless on the attack for 60 minutes almost, and they've got 26.4 seconds left to that 60 minutes to make a difference here late. Time out's over, let's do it folks. Potentially the last face off of the game right here. Ready, set, let's go. Face off draw to the right of Morneau. Puck is down and away we go. The Lightning looking to come up with this puck. Mark out there driving into the front of the net. Ray out there as well and it's directed in front. Ray can't come up with the puck. She now collects it. 15 seconds to go on the chance. Wrap round opportunity. Puck fired all the way from the crease. Hickerson at the point for the Lightning. She'll fire it down. Met there by an Inferno stick with five seconds to go. Skates it out, kills the clock two, and the Inferno will walk away. Victors in this one, a 3-2 final, and a finish that, wow, just a thriller 60 minutes here at rink number two in Cold Lake, and that is how you finish a hockey game, folks. You knew, right? You just had to minimize the risks and maximize the opportunity, and Chiesa on side of the net, didn't make a mistake for the second time when it came to her and gets the goal that makes it 3-2. That's how this one finishes. And I think, uh, yeah, look at that. The coach first thing pointing out, getting right to Morneau and saying, that one's from you. That one's from you all the way. The infernal walk away on the back of Morneau. A 3-2 victor in this one. The lightning though. They walk away with this one, heads held high, I'd imagine. That was a heck of an effort and a heck of a game all the way through from both sides. And a one goal game in the Provincials, can't complain too much about that as a broadcaster up here, high atop rink number two. 
So the refs, everybody will shake hands, everybody will gather on the respective blue lines. And <laughs> I think if you're going to pick an MVP for this game from the Inferno, it's going to be Morneau. I think that's pretty obvious. I missed who scored the second goal for the Lightning, so I can't exactly tell you I've got somebody to pick there. I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't give you a pick there, and unfortunately that's that's rough. But I think everybody on Lightning had really strong games. I think Mark, of course, Juliana Mark looked like she had a very strong game out there. I wouldn't be surprised if it's her, in fact. A couple of breakaways and a couple of great efforts from her, but what a game all around. And it is dead pin silent in here, and I feel like I'm the only one talking again as we await the MVP announcement here at rink number two after this game concludes 3-2 for the Inferno. And seems to me there might be a little confusion about something. I'm not really sure. Linesman skating around, trying to get the discussion figured out. And now I think we got it. I think we got the tournament, uh, one of the tournament chairs there down at the ice level with the MVP. Tuke uh, having a good chuckle and now... Uh, Now I'm really confused. I got the headset on, so I'm a little deaf. I can't hear quite exactly what's happening here when it comes to ice level stuff, so. Not 100% sure what that was all about, but it looks like everything's taken care of here. And we've got the MVPs. There you go. Man, you know, back in the day, you could almost accuse me of not watching the hockey game. I'm pretty much perfect at uh, picking the MVPs this tournament. I'm not doing bad. All right, game on. So Juliana Mark wins the MVP for the Airdrie Lightning. Yep, and there you go. Zoe Morneau wins the MVP for this game for the GHC Junior Inferno. So I guess, you know, end of the day, that's not bad at all. Morneau, though, well deserving of it. Same as Mark on the side of the Lightning. And both teams, I'd say, walk away with a head held high because that was one heck of a hockey game for you folks back home and everybody in the stands here in Cold Lake. But as for me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tyson Dolany with Call here on Dolany TV. This one, I'm going to catch you in a few moments' time. We only got about 20 minutes until the Lakeland Jaguars take the ice here on rink number two for the first and potentially only time in this tournament. Uh, the rink is packed for the Panthers so far, unless everybody's not leaving. I don't know what everyone's doing. But we'll chat with you folks in a little bit time here on the next live stream. Join me next, uh, next 